Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we continue the stock plugin series, this time going over Fat Channel XT. In this video, we are not going to be going over the Fat Channel on a Studio Live console. We're just going to be talking about the one inside Studio One, but the one inside Studio One is a virtual representation of that on the Studio Live consoles. But stick around, you might still discover a thing or two. The Fat Channel XT is an all-in-one channel strip inside Studio One that gives us a lot of tools. High-pass filters, gates or expanders, compressors, EQs, and a built-in limiter. Instead of me talking about it like this, let's dive into the DAW and go over all of the controls on the stock version. So here we are inside the session, and here it is, the Fat Channel XT in its standard version. And you'll notice that I have this button engaged so you can see everything all at the same time. When you first open Fat Channel, you might see it like this. I also do wanna say that in this video, we're only gonna be going over the stock components of all of these. We're not gonna be going into the Fat Channel collection or something like the Tube or Fat Comp or the passive or vintage EQs. We're strictly sticking with the stock components. In another video, we'll get into the Fat Channel collection and a lot of the things that are available inside those modules. So let's start off by going over all of the controls that are available inside this plugin, and we'll start it at the top and work our way down. I've already talked about it because it's showing you the view that we're looking at, but it's the stack button, which is right here. Engaging this button just allows you to view everything in the fat channel all at once or have everything reduced down to a smaller window. If you have it reduced down and you have modules on, they are still active. You're just only looking at the ones that you have selected. And that's what these buttons are up here. They allow you to cycle through your different modules in the fat channel. Before we move down to the first module, I wanna show you the swap button. You can see right now the signal chain of the fat channel is the high pass filter and gate, then compressor, EQ, then limiter. But the swap button will actually change where the EQ and the compressor are inside the chain. I've clicked it here, so now the EQ comes first and then the compressor. If I wanna send it back, I just hit this again and it swaps the position. Okay, let's move down to our first module. That is the high pass filter and gate module. In this module, you have the high pass filter and that's all the way over here. And you just activate this by scrolling it up or down to whatever frequency you need to set it to. You'll also notice that it actually has a graphical representation in the EQ module, even if the EQ module isn't on. If the high pass filter is engaged, you'll see it in this module if you're looking in the stacked view. Up next is the gate. And this has a lot of the same standard settings you'll see on any gate, including threshold, attack and release times, the range, and it also has a key filter so that you can actually listen in and adjust what frequencies the gate is listening to and will allow signal to pass through. If you wanna listen to what the gate is listening to, you can activate this button here, which is key listen, and then dial in your frequencies over here or listen to the side chain that's coming in. You can trigger a gate from a side chain. Underneath that is the expander button. What this will do is turn it from a gate into an expander. A gate is generally a lot harder and will really cut off a signal where an expander just changes the dynamic range, almost the opposite of a compressor. You set your threshold and say anything below the threshold, you can actually push it down a little bit further. Where a gate says if you're underneath this threshold, the signal doesn't go through. This is all dictated by the range though. You see when we have expander enabled, the range adjusts to auto by itself. Or with the gate, we can adjust how much we want, almost making it an expander. The next module and the way we have it now is the compressor. On this compressor, you'll see a lot of the very similar things that we've talked about in a previous stock plugin. All of the very basic controls that you'll find in any compressor, your threshold, attack and release settings, your ratio knob, and you can also do the key filter on this module as well. So you can roll off the low end and not have it trigger the compressor. And the last control is the makeup gain knob over here. You have another key listen button over here, so you can dial in your key filter and you have a soft button, which will change the characteristics of the compressor itself, going from a hard knee or engaging it to a soft knee. The last button available is auto, which changes the attack and release times to auto. And then it adjusts according to the source material that's going into the fat channel. In both the gate module and the compressor module, you have graphical representations on the right-hand side with 
a reduction meter all the way on the right. So you can see in our gate, which is active, we have a 24 dB reduction right now. If we had signal going through and the compressor engaged and it was going over the threshold, you would see the gain reduction on this meter here. Moving on to the next module, we have the EQ section. And in this section, we have four band EQ, low frequency, low mid frequency, high mid frequency, and high frequency. With each one of these, their parametric EQs, the high and low EQs can be changed into shelf styles. So if we want bell curve on my high frequency, or I can hit this button here and turn it into a high shelf. Same thing for the low end as well. On all of the bands, you're also able to adjust the Q or the bandwidth of these EQs as well. In each band, you can turn that band on and off with the power buttons located underneath the label of what band you're working in. Lastly, when you're working with a shelf EQ on the high or low frequencies, to adjust the Q or bandwidth of it, it will change the shape to more of a resonant style EQ. So I'm on my high frequency shelf right here. And if I adjust it, you'll see that it gives us a dip before our frequency and then a little notch on top until it smooths everything out all the way up. If we go in the opposite direction, it really just smooths it out and extends the range or bandwidth of the shelf. In the EQ, the graphical representation is also interactive where I can grab any one of these nodes and I'm just clicking and holding right now so I can boost or cut. Since I have the high mid frequency selected right now, if I use my mouse wheel, I can change the Q or bandwidth of this band. And then I can hover over to my next one and do the exact same thing. Watch your fast mouse movements when you're working in the graphical area because all you have to do is hover over a different EQ band and it will switch you over unless you're actively using an EQ band. So if I have my low mid frequency, I'm going to click and hold. And if I bring it to the same spot as the high mid frequency, it doesn't jump me over to the other band. But as soon as I let go and go back over, it now automatically puts me to the high mid frequency. And the last module on the fat channel is a built in limiter. When we engage the limiter with the threshold, you can roll this down from zero all the way down to minus 28 dB. And when signal attempts to pass over the threshold, the limiter will slam it right into place. So let's put this back to the default setting. I currently have it on my lead vocal bus and let's dial in some sounds using the stock fat channel. So there we go, working in stacked mode, I'm able to quickly go through my high pass filter, my compressor and my EQ to clean this lead vocal up just a little bit. There is a few things going on with this lead vocal. It's not just a vocal, there's some doubles and some stereo doubles in there as well. But this is on the bus and very quickly and easily with the fat channel, I can dial in some sounds to put it where I need it to sit a little better in this mix. So there it is, the bare bones version of the Fat Channel XT plugin. In our next video, we'll actually go into part two, where we'll dive into a lot of the other modules that are available for the compressor and EQ sections of the Fat Channel. This is where you can really dial in some unique sounds because of the emulations that are available. When we get into these, I'll start off with the ones that are available for every Studio One Pro user that's out there. 
Then we'll dive into the Fat Channel collection because it really opens up your available options. If we look into just the compressors, you have the standard tube and fat. This is available for everybody. But with the Fat Channel collection, it builds up starting with the Brit Comp and going from there, the Classic Comp, Comp 160. There's a lot of new options that are available when you get the Fat Channel collection or just different modules to enhance your Fat Channel. You don't have to get all of them. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.